What's up, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome to the final video in the Over the Wire uh, Bandit War Games video series of the, the walkthroughs I've been doing here. So here we are. Um, this should be the very last video, because this is the last level that's fully been made for Bandit. We're on level 25. We just got the password in the last video. It's stored in this file here for us, so we can use our SSH pass with the correct user, correct port, and we are in... And the prompt here says, logging into Bandit 26 from Bandit 25 should be fairly easy. The shell for the user Bandit 26 is not bin bash, but something else. Find out what it is, how it works, and how to break out of it. Okay. Um, well, what have we got here? In our home directory, well, <laughs> okay, geez. I guess we just see an SSH key for Bandit 26, at least supposedly, and it is. All right. This is another RSA private key, or just a... Uh, a file we can use to authenticate with SSH without a password. Um, we can just use TAC I to specify it. I used tab to autocomplete there. And we can just say bandit26 at uh, bandit.labs. Well, I guess let's just let's just use localhost, right? Because this is just ourself. We may not have the domain name and stuff set out on, on this box. So bandit26 at localhost. I hit enter here. Um, yep, go ahead and accept the uh, fingerprint. Um, <laughs> and connection to localhost is closed. It gives us this nice ASCII art of Bandit 26, but uh, we don't actually get a shell. Uh, we're still Bandit 25. You can see our user down here. So, what the heck's going on? Uh, well, okay, the prompt told us here the shell for the user Bandit 26 is not bin bash. So it's not bash or the shell that we're used to, but it's something else. Find out what it is, how it works, and how to break out of it. So, how can we find out what it is? Well, we can check in the password file, the etc. password file, pass wd, and this will show, this is a, almost on every single Linux computer, literally every single, single Linux computer I've seen. This has to be, okay, yeah, I'm just going to go say all Linux computers. <laughs> this is where the um, files, uh, file, file stores, um, and information of the users that are on the system. It is a file that stores the information on the users on the system. So you'll get a listing uh, separated by colons of every single user that's on this box. So we can see Bandit, all the levels that we've accomplished, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to where we are now, level 25 in Bandit 26. X is where they'd have the password stored, but since it's marked with an X, it's stored in a shadow. It gives us the user ID number. It gives us... Um, their name, like their nickname, their home directory, and the shell that they operate in. So you can see all of these users kind of have been bashed by default, so they are real users. But Bandit 26, the level that we're trying to get to, has a different entry for the shell. It's called User Bin Show Text. Huh, that's not bin bash, so what is that? Let's just run file on that. And, oh, it's a shell script. Okay, it's just probably bash. Can we see what that thing is? Let's cat that file out. And this is a, not a bash script, but just sh, so okay, still a shell script. Um, sets up a terminal, runs the more command on text, whatever. Um, this must be the banner that we saw. That must be the ASCII Bandit 26 logo that we saw earlier. And then just straight up exits. Okay, jeez. Huh. More, have you guys seen that before? Man, more. More is a lot like less, right? It's more is not less. It doesn't let you move up, really. It just lets you buffer uh, output and just kind of iterate or move through it with just the enter command, at least from what I've seen. Um, but the catch here is that it more, since it buffers, it may let you run commands. We can do things with it when it's actually buffering the output. We can uh, see in this man page or this information, we can actually execute a command in a subshell. Nice. Okay. With, ex with an exclamation point or a colon exclamation point. So we just need to get more to buffer, buffer the output or whatever it's trying to display. Actually, so it will, it will hold at this kind of, um, you see this cursor down at the very bottom that's letting us scroll and move up and down through the buffered output or what it's trying to display on the screen. Looks like that Bandit 26 banner was pretty small, but if we blow that up, we might be able to get it 
um, to buffer for us. So, like, if I were to run more on a set or a password, that obviously took up more space than the screen has. So you can see, now I've got this cursor, more down here, and I can use enter to move through it. But if I hit the exclamation point, I can run commands in a subshell, just like it had us do... Just like it said in the man page. I can run who am I, and I can get bandit25. I can... Uh, let's run this again. Exclamation point. Let's cat, etc. Bandit, pass... Bandits 25. And there's our password. So if the Bandit 26 user is just running this more command, maybe we have to catch it so that it will be able to display that banner in a big enough way so that it'll, or maybe a small enough screen so it'll be caught and we'll have to buffer that. Um, let's create a new um, terminal window for this. Make this huge, right? Uh, I'll widen the screen out. And let's clear this so I just have it in the center here. Let's get into the folder we have um, our bandit25 password in. Steal this. And now SSH um, bandit25 at bandit.labs.overthewire.org. Make sure you have the correct port here, 2220. Paste the password in so we make our connection. Great. Now let's make this a little bit bigger again, just for safekeeping. Let's SSH tag I with the sub key or the private key. And um, we want bandit26 at localhost. Now when we hit enter, yes. Okay, that's still a little too big or too small. So let's run this now. I get yes again. Okay, cool. I just, I'm using uh, Control shift plus to make the text bigger. You could make a really, really small window if you wanted to, just shrink it down. Um, but once you get more to actually buffer and you don't get to see all the text, now you can use that exclamation point and do things like uh, run, cat, etc., bandit, pass, bandit, 26. Now, it, it didn't look like it displayed because it's just a little too big. If I hit enter... Nothing's going on. Why didn't that happen? Work, please. Bandit 26. It's just not showing it to us. Why is that? Let's try that one more time. Okay. Uh, let's try and run bash. Nothing. Jeez. Now that's still too big here. That's not buffering the way we want it to. Yes. Can I run forward slash bin forward slash bash? Still no. Can I run colon? No, it didn't let me. Bin cat. Etc. Bandit pass. Bandit twenty six. It just not does not want to display this, and I don't know why. Well, okay. Um, let's try and move on from that. Maybe there is more we can do. More we can do with more. Uh, I didn't mean to lead you down that wrong path. Didn't mean to lead you astray here. Checking out the man pages. Oh, open up an editor. Okay, at the uh, the line that it's looking at. Okay, so if it buffers, we can still get maybe like oh a text editor like Vim or Vi to open up, and then we might be able to switch folders or switch the file that we're looking at to do something more, like open other files. Let's try that. Yes, I'm good with that. So more is working now. I can hit V. Okay, cool. And it looks like we are in Vim or VI. Now I don't need my screen to be so huge, but it helps. Okay, so we're in edit mode, but I can hit colon... Or semicolon, or yeah, colon, shift, semicolon, to get the colon. And R in Vim will let you, um, oh boy, 
Oh, gosh. R should let you open up a, another or read another file. So let's try and read that bandit pass bandit 24. Uh, sorry, bandit 26. What's going on? Let's try this all over again. I'm trying to quit. I'm doing a bad job, guys. I'm sorry. Bandit 26. Changing a read-only file. Uh, a swap file is being opened. Yeah, that's fine. Try to hit one. I gotta zoom this out. See if it'll tell me anything. Anything I don't know. Oh! Okay! <laughs> There's the file! <laughs> we got it! Somehow! I zoomed it out. And it worked. <laughs> Let's uh let's take note of that. Man, what a finish, right? Nano Bandit twenty six. Let's paste that in there. What even happened? Q. Um let's try that one more time. Well I need bandit twenty five's password if I'm gonna do it just like that. Let's make sure that it actually works so you guys are good to go. What we did was we used the private key to SSH into Bandit26 at localhost. And more... When we got it to buffer, let's just make a really small window here. When we got more to buffer, we hit R. R? Oh no, V. V to get into Vim. And then colon R to read, etc. Bandit pass Bandit 26. So I now at this point made this bigger so I can read this. And, okay. Another file may be editing the same thing to deal with this, just hit enter. Okay, nice. And it reads it just like that. It, you can ignore whatever um, whatever warning that was with the swap file or another user being able to read this. So, there we go. That's it. That's how... Okay, cool. We finally read the password for Bandit26. And now, we should be done. Because there is no 26 to 27. That's it, guys. We did it. Check it out, Bandit 26. And that is the end of Bandit, the introductory uh, war game for Over the Wire. So we went through a lot. Some simple stuff, some easy stuff, some hard stuff, some stuff that shouldn't have been hard, but I just kept screwing up. Um, and I hope you had a good time with it. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed um, I, there is obviously a ton of write-ups and solutions and guides all over the internet on Over the Wire, and there are even tons of YouTube videos that do this exact same thing. But hope you guys had fun with this one. Hope you enjoyed whatever character or personality I bring to the table. And I hope I didn't move too fast for you, uh, or even too slow in some cases. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed these videos, and I uh, hope to be making more of them. I'll try and do more war games with Over the Wire, and I'll try and do other things that are CTF-like and cybersecurity-like and computer science-like. So, uh, if you like this series, again, this is where I can do the shameless plug, because we're at the very end of it all. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> hey, whatever. Like, comment, subscribe. All those stupid, flashy words uh, that helps YouTubers make money. So, thanks, guys. I'll see you later.